Hey there, I'm Marie back with another video. It's 1.28 p.m. It is Tuesday afternoon. It is May 21st, and you know what? I just wasted a few minutes running my mouth when the recorder wasn't on. I can't tell you how upset that makes me. But anyway, that's just life, and I got plenty of time on my hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and remake this video. Okay, so I did leave the house today. I went out to the grocery store, and I've been trying to like, you know, not go to the grocery store, um, so far apart like you know there might be days like I go one day and then maybe like a few days later I'll come I, if, if I don't mind going back to back why because I need to get out of this house it's driving me freaking crazy being in the house all the time so I have to make sure that I leave early in the morning okay I it's nice to walk in the morning sun it feels really good on my skin okay and you know it gives me time to reflect and whatever on the way there I have this house I I, I give houses names okay if the house is remarkable and outstanding, I give it a name, okay? And I always like to pretend that I'm like somebody who has the ability to grant prizes and stuff like that to people who take care of their house, right? Because it's so important to, I consider it like raising the vibration, right? This house had a beautiful purple tree in front of it. And the tree, when it the sun hits it, it like beams down on the house and it just like just like so much purple right and it had a few of the purple flowers that were on site on the um that fell and ended up on the driveway right and it, it looked so picturesque it looked like something that should have been like on a better homes and garden magazine it was just absolutely gorgeous and they had other flowers um mixed in you know which really made it stand out contrasting colors um I think it's wonderful when people beautify their home and I want to talk a little bit about beautification transformation a little bit in this video today but I want to talk a little bit about her, the house and 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 um, why I think it's important for to beautify things okay now I was telling my son a couple of days ago about why you know it's important for me to keep a house clean right because I deal with a lot of depression okay and I need like to feel like there's a there's a free flowing energy in my house okay i i, I gave the example of you know I, I would call it chi flow um in my last video that didn't get recorded so i'm gonna have to repeat myself again so give an example of it is when i was a kid i i was forced to stay in a bedroom with my adoptive sister and my sister was really messy and um you know there used to be this tv show called the odd couple and um it had jack Putman in it and I think Tony Randall, yeah, Tony Randall was Felix, the clean guy. And Tony Randall played Oscar, who was the messy guy. My sister, Lisa, was the messy guy. She was Oscar, I was Felix, okay? This is not trying to put people down, but this is what it is. I was always trying to keep order, okay? But my sister was not like that, okay? So ended up, it's very hard, okay? If you're dealing with two opposites, one's gonna win over the other, okay? It's, it's just, it's gonna be that way. So either you're gonna become completely really sloppy or she's gonna become really clean, okay? So that's the way it was. So it was horrible and I was so glad when I got to be a teenager and have my own room. But anyway, um, it was always messy in there. But I remember, you know, going to the kitchen to do my homework instead of like, you know, sitting on my bed or whatever to do my, my homework. I hated being in that room. Um, so one day my dad got really pissed off. He's like, you guys go in there and you clean up that room. We not, we not only cleaned it, you know from like the, the ceiling to the floor but we also rearranged the room and after we rearranged it I realized I could think I wanted to do my homework in my room I wanted to be in my room I loved my room I felt energized by my room and that was the clearing of the negativity energy the negative energy the negative energy it was like decluttering and de and, and deconfusing a situation you've been like maybe you've been to work and you walk into like maybe the meeting room right and they're rearranging the meeting room and there's like chairs scattered all over the place there's like papers everywhere you cannot think and people have literally stepped out of the room like oh man i can't i can't be in here right now the reason why you feel that way is because you just walked into a ball of confusion you walked into something that is just like a nightmare there's no order to it you can't concentrate in it and it's important to have that order in order to function right and when you beautify your home you are attracting positive energy right she takes care of this lady uh, uh, that I walk by her home that the flowers were nice and fresh she keeps takes care of her garden so that means she's gonna attract things like hummingbirds she's gonna attract things like ladybugs right you want to keep your home 
in a state of condition where you're attracting not just the positive omens such as the hummingbird and the ladybug okay because those are spiritual representations but it's also the positive energy okay that's going to be flowing to your home that's important right so you know that was my little pep talk to my son why we need to keep the house clean right um if you have how uh have a house where you have a lot of dead plants debris dog shit whatever okay and it's just sitting there it, it, this is the sort of energy you're going to be drawing into your house okay so it's better i i i commend people who who not only keep their houses play keep their houses tidy but also beautify it beautifying is important it upgrades it 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 lifts the vibration so the person who owns that house not only are they satisfied with it but you know what people who walk by feel better by looking at it, it does raise a vibration in a neighborhood it makes the neighborhood seem more worthy of wanting to live there you see what I'm saying instead of living in a place where people throw their cups and their trash everywhere now mind you I live in an apartment complex so a lot of times you know I I live in an apartment complex okay so sometimes you're living in quite in close proximities to people where maybe you know I don't know how trash gets I'm not saying that my neighbors are throwing it I'm certainly not throwing it but you know you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's just like, you know, um, environment matters. Your environment matters, okay? Like attracts like in, in terms of magic, okay? And when I look at that, I call it the blessing house because it's a beautiful home. Um, it's a very simple, modest type home, but what makes it beautiful is the love that they put into the home and it shows on the outside. So I've been really busy and um, I've been working with clay and I brought out some of my old felt and I've been working okay now everybody knows that I have kind of put off my past life experiments digging investigation on this whole CB Braganza thing mainly because it was causing me a lot of depression and a lot of the negativity that was associated with the targeting it was just too much okay but I know that I have to resume eventually so I decided to you know the setting that I'm going to be having is I'm, I'm I love working with the blue light bulb I really do okay but you know I haven't really worked with candles a lot lately um, and I want to bring that back so I decided to make some can a candle holder uh, with sculpty clay something that represents knowledge something like that so I decided to make a base of a tree now that's all I can really make I'm not somebody who's artistic but hey if you are artistic and you can do something better than what I can go out there to Michael's or whatever it is get some sculpty clay and start making some stuff okay because it's about you it's about expressing you maybe you maybe you are better at art than I am and it's not about who's better okay but it is about releasing stress it is about being able to develop um coping skills you know what I mean and also you know creating objects for yourself that are magical okay in this case I needed this candle holder okay and it's supposed to be like I said it's a tree stump okay with an enchanted face you'll notice there's eyes and a mouth on it okay um, and I, I'm deciding to use, I decided to use a dark blue candle for this meditation. And um, I'm going to be writing on it and scribing on it. It's going to be on my altar. Okay. I, so I made that and I was going to proud of that. And I made another candle holder that's similar, but it's painted black. Okay. And that was supposed to be like the universe. Okay. It's at, kind of out of reach right now. I'm not going to grab it to show you. But I have been up to my old felt um, hobbies and because I love this kind of stuff. And let me tell you something about my, um, my felt objects. Yes, I do enchant objects. Okay. Sometimes I make like little hearts for my animals or my dolls that um like there's a heart on this this cat that i made but the heart inside of it okay there's an actual heart inside of it sometimes it's got plants in there sometimes it has like a cotton ball dipped with some sort of oil or whatever and i make a heart for it okay and i breathe life into each and every enchanted object so i made this kitty a while ago and i like this one some of them are refrigerator magnets some of them are keychains and i just make them and put them in a bag I like this one. This is a refrigerator magnet. It's a blue kitty with flowers on it. I don't know if you can see this. This is a refrigerator magnet. I don't know if you can really see the colors, but I like painting on felt as well. This is a dolphin jumping in the water. Now I used um, uh, paint 
felt and one of those little gems that you buy at the dollar store the little dolphin I made that and then let me show you this keychain that I made this is an owl keychain it's cute huh yeah I put little stars and mushrooms on this one <laughs> Yeah, so I like to keep busy as much as I possibly can. And I wanted to talk today about um, transformation. You know, um, I had mentioned that, you know, um, well, one of, the, one of the main reasons why whew, I was bullied. Um, now, I've been obviously know, everyone knows that I've been bullied for a very long time, mainly because of what was supposed to be the experiment, okay? And what people were getting angry about, um, the, the hatred that I was dealing with, a lot of, it, it was a lot of bullying from women. Uh, that, you know, kind of showed me the hypocrisy of uh, how a lot of women talk about, oh, you know, we, we want to be strong, we want to be supportive of women, but like I said, if they see a strong support woman, they want to attack that woman, okay? Silly, but it is true. And I think women have a big problem with, um, with this need of feeling competitive. You know, I just mentioned somebody that I thought was very, very beautiful, who had everything in life, that she should have been happy with, but she was not happy and content with what she had, and she got greedy. She got hungry for power, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? We were, I just was talking about beautifying the home, okay? I do believe that you should beautify yourself, okay? Now, like I said, not everybody is into makeup, and I don't think that's necessary, okay? It's not necessary, but I will tell you it is a pleasure okay not every woman likes wearing makeup not every woman loves clothes okay but every but you know what every white woman has the right to do those things okay now if those things aren't important to you you don't have to sit here and place value on those okay but I'm talking about women who want to tear down other women who do care about those things okay because what we need to do in life is we need to go for the things that are important to us we define you individually define what is important to you okay if you have the desire to feel good about yourself okay there is no shame in that okay and if you have the desire to change something that you don't like in yourself there is no shame in that either that's called improvement it's called evolving okay meaning that you were at one stage in your life that you felt a certain amount of discontentment and you chose to transform into something else that is your right most important, if it is your desire and you do not act out that desire and go for that desire, then you are wasting your life. Okay. Now, we have a lot of women who, who jumped on me because I chose to live my life. I'm staying in my own lane. The point, of, the, point the, the difference between me and the tragedy of this girl who had everything, who was beautiful already, um, is that she became greedy and she believed in something that ended up leading to this tragic state that she was in okay some women are not content just to be nice looking they want to be the best they want all the attention they want all men to look at them they want um, people to envy them they feel as though that is the only definition of what beauty is and that's that's what they think okay and this is what this lady this hat she must have had this in her mind Okay, because I will tell you, I am a 53-year-old woman, old enough to be her mother. Okay, now obviously I'm not her mother, because Maria is a, a black woman, and this woman was a white woman. Okay, but when we're talking about age, age here, okay, this woman wanted me to feel a certain amount of jealousy towards her, which I could not do. Okay, and some people, right, they feel as though the only way that they can be feel beautiful is if other women are envious of them. The, my, my view on that is completely the opposite, okay? Because I'm a woman who believes in beautifying. I, I appreciate it, I love fucking clothes, I love makeup, and I wanna be around people who like those things too. Okay, so I don't wanna make those kind of people my enemy. But unfortunately, a lot of women have the mindset that they do, okay? What, the problem with it is, is that it is not anyone's responsibility to hold themselves back for you, okay? Everybody is responsible for their own life and how they live it, what they accomplish, and it has nothing to do with you. So when you see people who want to act out their anger, their frustration, and bully other people, the problem is always going to fall back on them. Now this is not a point 
point out who's to blame video, but what it is is to let people who want to transform their life into something better, into the idea version of what they planned for themselves, okay? And I'm letting you know that you're going to have to deal with some sort of, what do you call, opposition, because there's a lot of what I call imbalanced people. Actually, I'm, I'm making a video about this um, in the future, and I actually, um, I'm titling these people the discontented the discontented the people who are unhappy with themselves okay and these are the kind of people that you have to decide whether you want these people in your life or you don't okay now I will give you an example of what the discontented is the discontented person is a person who feels envy of your success whatever that might be okay it might be success because you uh, have a successful restaurant business okay they're discontent because they're not happy with their their, their profession okay so I'm gonna tell you right now that's gonna be very, very difficult okay and there's gonna be signs of them of their jealousy okay and you got to be strong sometimes and a lot of times what, what prevents people from reaching their goals or their dreams or desires is because of the discontented people want to throw wrenches in your plans they don't value your goals and sometimes people have what I call codependency issues okay codependency issues um, can be it can be for example two two friends who um, who always hung out with each other um, and let's just say for example these two women are overweight they're overweight women okay and deep down inside each woman wants to be at her higher level meaning they want they don't want to be this way they they actually hate being this way they hate it okay but it's comfortable for them why because they don't have to take any accountability for themselves Okay, but what they do is when they see women who do care about themselves, these two get together and they like to bully that person, right? Even to the point of like throwing them out of a job and making sure they never get another one, trying to kill them, right? It can get that far. Believe me, I know it's happened to me. Now, mind you, um, this is obviously the wrong way of going about things, okay? But we can obviously see that there's a lot of discontented people in the world. Okay, and don't just don't assume that just because somebody is overweight that they are going to attack you. Okay, but you do need to understand that a lot of overweight people, as well as other people who are discontented for whatever reason, could be they don't like their job, they hate their marriage, their whole fucking family sucks, whatever the case is, okay, that people do have feelings of envy. And most people, as we can see in this demonstration of my case, do not know how to, how to handle their envy in a uh, constructive way, okay? Now, when I take care of myself, I take care of myself because it's for my well-being, because it's my desire to do so. It has nothing to do, I don't sit here and like compare myself to so-and-so and so-and-so. I pick out the clothes that I like. I do with my hair what I like. My makeup is a reflection of my taste. I don't compete. I don't sit here and look at what this person's doing. Now, I do look at what other people are wearing if it looks cool. If it looks cool and I'm like, man, that looks really cool. You know, I because I like those things. I'm going to look at it, other people and point out their coolness, right? Because that's how I am, okay? It's hard in some in, in some cases because when people feel threatened, okay, a lot of women feel threatened by women who are attractive okay now I, I I'm gonna tell you right now I do not consider myself attractive okay I, I'm okay but I don't consider myself attractive now there are certain women that I like I mentioned Halle Berry all the time she's fucking gorgeous if I do have that hypothetical party of course she's she's invited to my party okay now I am not in any way somebody who feels like I'm ugly but I don't think that I'm gorgeous either but for somebody who is 53 years old I would say that I, I take pretty good care of myself and mainly it, it comes from genetics I'm a black woman I don't age as fast okay and I think that was something that pissed a lot of white people off okay they really fucking hated me for that it's not my fault okay but I do have the right to be who I am okay so I dealt with a lot of irrational bullying all right um, 
when you deal with people who are jealous, they will want to uh, push you down into that cracker bar um, crab barrel back with them. Okay, and like the example of the two girlfriends who have been friends for a long time, and what keeps them in that relationship is their unhappiness. All right, so one girl decides that she wants to change it. She goes away for the summer. She, you know, goes on, makes better plans for herself, develops better habits or whatever, and she comes back and she meets up with a new friend. Now, the girl who's still overweight is going to have an issue with her. So she's, she might try to make her feel guilty. So a lot of times, overweight women will try to sabotage the other woman because they feel jealous. I know that when I was in workplaces, I would have people offering me candy like at like, like 9 o'clock in the morning and stuff like that, okay? Um, the thing is, is that I believe in maintaining a body that is balanced, okay? I believe in eating foods that are, um, that come from the earth, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I eat, you know, I eat my junk, my share of junk food on the holidays and stuff like that, but this is who I am, okay? And this is how I choose to live my life, okay? But one thing about it is just that nowadays we have a big problem with obesity and the problem with it is like i i don't hate obese people okay but i do understand a lot of people who are obese are of the discontented okay they're not happy being obese they want to change okay and i'm saying you know what if you want to help you want change continue watching my videos i will help you get through it Okay, but one thing you should never do is lash out at somebody else because of your frustration. Now, I do believe that a lot of people are overweight because they are absorbing other people's toxicity. Meaning, you know, somebody who is trying to build for themselves, trying to um, take care of their life, they want to take care of their, their, um, their homes, they want to take care of their bodies, they want to take care of what beautify, beautify their life, which is what that's what it's beautifying, okay? Now, whether you're considered beautiful or not, that's all subjective, okay? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but improve, okay, themselves. That's their choice. When it comes to those who are discontented, um, they like to bully up on people who are, in their mind, living what they wish they had, okay? So, this is what you have to be prepared for. Okay, when in your journey of life, it is your responsibility to meet and fulfill your destiny. And sometimes you have to say goodbye to people who are going to obstruct that. It's that simple. You know what I mean? Because if they're obstructing it, that should let you know that they don't love you. Okay, we all know that love is a very, very rare thing. Okay, by women criticizing other women and bullying them, they are basically saying, I want what you have. I want what you have. Okay. I want what Halle Berry has, but I ain't ever going to get that. Okay. But I can be the best version of me. So if you want to be the best version of you, I'll help you get through it. Okay. But if you want to heart other people, I'm going to tell you right now, if you are dealing with a person who is of the discontented, okay, and they are showing signs that they are going to hurt you, you need to step away from them. Now, there's a lot of people who are of the discontented. I'm not just, I'm not referring to um, just obese people, but I'm talking about people who are in shitty marriages, people who are in shitty jobs, people are in a state in their life where they're not happy, okay? Um, they can be very toxic. They are very toxic, okay? This issue was like around the world toxic, okay? is not your responsibility. It uses something you have to, every right to stand up for. Okay. What else did I want to cover in this about the discontented? I think I pretty much um, covered that. Now, oh, I want to talk about humility with the discontented. Okay. There are some people, for example, um, who are struggling with their weight. And, and I want to talk about people who, who really are looking at themselves and they understand, you know what? This is something I need to change. And only you can change it. And you have to want to change it. Okay. And it's not anybody's responsibility to do that. But I will tell you what, what's going on with you is that you have absorbed the toxicity of other people. If you're somebody who knows that you, you, you see yourself in a different, um, 
in a different light. Like you, you, you probably a lot of women have clothes in their closet that they buy because deep down inside they want to get into that size whatever. Okay, this is what they really want. Okay, and we know that they have their fucked up friends that come around knowing that they they're trying to lose weight. They're trying to take care of themselves. They need to be able to make choices for themselves and you got these sneaky friends that want to come in with their fucking sweet treats all of a sudden they'll do this shit they'll do it at work too okay and i will tell you that's an abuse a form of abuse okay it's bullying in a way because it it gets to be bullying when they start threatening you like well how come you're not eating that all you need to say is because i i don't want it you don't need, it doesn't need to go any further than that. Nobody has the right to sit here and force you to eat something or pressure you or make you feel bad. Okay? Your friends are supposed to support you. Your views. Okay? And if they don't, it's time to go. Time to go. Put some distance between them. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? But what I want to talk about, the humility of the discontented, is there are some people who are in a period of transition where... They understand that their shitty attitude isn't getting them anywhere. Okay. And they realize, you know what? You're right. I need to change my life. Okay. And it's not, you know, Halle Berry's fault that I don't look as good as her. Okay. It's not Beyonce's fucking fault that, you know, <laughs> it's not her fucking fault that she's gorgeous. It's not her fucking fault. So I, I'm not even going to sit here and direct that. Like I said, my, my job and responsibility to myself is to be the best version of Maria. And your responsibility to yourself is to be the verse, best version to reflect the views, the love, the light, the likes, dislikes that you are within your own self. No one else is going to do that for you. Okay. So going back to the humility issue when it comes to transforming yourself. Okay. There are a lot of overweight people that have to come to that realization. You know what? I need to change. And I'm angry and I'm jealous of other women I'm jealous of other women because what you really want to get back to is you want to get back to that point perhaps maybe you were a teenager last time you remember yourself looking in the mirror and loving who you were might have been a teenager okay and somehow or another you lost yourself and it happens to a lot of women a lot of women some women have thrown themselves away for shitty men some people have thrown the, their, their selves away for a shitty man and a bunch of rebellious kids that really don't give a shit what you fucking goddamn do and how much money you spent and how many fucking sacrifices you made. You need to take care of you. That doesn't mean that you don't love your husband. It does not mean that you don't love your kids. You know, what makes a statement to a kid more than anything? I remember my mother's misery. I remember my mother giving herself, losing herself, okay, and hating other women because they still had their self. Because deep down inside, my mother wanted to get back to who she was. Okay? Okay, the whole goal in life is to get balance in your life. So, if you are somebody who is coming to the realization that you want your life to change, I think one thing I, I try to introduce into food magic is not only is food... Um, when it comes to meditation and manifesting, okay, not everybody is going to feel something when it comes to lighting a candle or even burning incense, right? But one thing about what a magic is, is sensation. One thing that makes magic go is sensation. Like I, the sensation of hearing a fucking good song, right? It can raise like, if a song's really good, especially if it's got like a lot of like a beautiful musical piece, I can get like goosebumps, okay? And those goosebumps aren't just goosebumps. That's energy. That means I'm radiating something. Something's coming out of me. And I, it's, it's a power, okay? Food is a power, okay? And I don't believe in just throwing shit in your mouth willy-nilly, okay? Some people, I'm suggesting for some people... If you're in a period of transformation, come along with me. I'm going to be talking about transformation through food magic. Okay? Food magic is one way that not only are you meditating, but you're daydreaming. You're fantasizing about what it is you want, and you're eating the foods that you want. Transformation is going to be a big thing this summer. So, I do have a few um, um, readings that I wanted to go um, into. And like I said, you know, I have different methods of choosing who I'm going to be reading for. Um, in this case, I was like kind of reaching into a little bag. And this person keeps popping up. Don't know why, but 
I'm glad and I do hope to meet this person one day. Um, this particular person, Virgo 31, you are just all in it. Anyway, the message that I got is that my ex and act work knows that I do have a, a good amount of um, resentment towards them, and I do. Okay. And you're, you know, you understand this whole story. And like I said, you know, I, I do these readings based on what the celebrities are thinking about my situation. I could dig into your business, but I choose not to, and I respect you, so I wouldn't do that. But if you want me to dig into your business out in front of everybody, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll do so. Hey, it's up to you. But yes, I do have a lot of resentment towards my network, mainly because of the, the pain that they've caused, um, and the fact that they could take this you can use an experiment as an excuse to enact what you want it to but when you really analyze it it really can't be used as an excuse it's deeper than that and this is the reason why it there's just so much disdain that i feel towards them and i i do get the feeling there's a lot of people who support me and who feel a lot of remorse because they're like looking at themselves like fuck what the fuck did i do you know what i mean because it's funny how how double-sided people are on this issue the, I, I mentioned the issue of the split mind thing okay i have known people who would watch movies like roots i knew white people who watched the color purple and cried okay but they themselves would be able to enact that kind of hatred towards people of color in a gang stalking activity okay it's a very deep thing okay and um, I, of course, dealt with bullying uh, for who I am, what I am, and, you know, my life or whatever. I do know that a lot of people had this issue um, about me um, being a male in my past life, okay? And this is something that I was persecuted for. Uh, this could have been one of the reasons why they were, like, making fun of me, talking about, you know, me wearing makeup and stuff like that. Because they probably wanted to see me as a man all my life or whatever. Or trying to joke. Uh, it, it, that was ignorance on their part. Okay? There's no way in the world you can live year after year. I mean, so many different lives and come back the same sex. Okay? And plus, you know, when you think about it from a spiritual point of view... I will tell you, there are certain spiritual lessons that you are never going to understand unless you live in the vessel of a man. Okay? And there are certain spiritual lessons that you're never going to learn unless you live in the vessel of a woman. Okay? So, it is there for our, those transformations or whatever, however that cycle works, it's for our own highest good. Okay? And it's nothing to scoff at. I dealt, I dealt with a lot of ignorance in this issue, as well as a lot of arrogance in this issue, and it just got to be too ugly. Okay? Also, um, there was a lot of, um, I get the message that there were a lot of white women who were involved in my targeting. Um, I do know that I work for quite a, white, a lot of white women, especially the girl who, um, which I look at as kind of a tragedy because she was a very beautiful woman. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. It's sad and it's, you can, I will say, you can suspect demonic activity when you see someone like her as being a group, a part of the discontented. Okay. There was nothing. I'm going to tell you, that girl was beautiful. Beautiful. Physically beautiful. She had a beautiful skin. Soft, beautiful skin. She had beautiful hair. Uh, a beautiful body. Uh, like I said, she was very dainty. She, she spoke well. She was running a business. For her age, she was very successful. Okay. And a lot of white women uh, felt jumped on this bandwagon of bullying me. Okay, and um, <laughs> I don't know what to say, really. Obviously, these people weren't my friends, and they were of the discontented. And all I'm going to say is about those people is I hope that you find yourself, okay? And there is no value. There is, and you might feel a charge when you like to enact your evil and your wicked behavior. And this is not all white women, okay? I'm talking about the women who were targeting me, okay? When you feel this sort of amount of charge when you bully somebody okay that is your narcissistic supply i'm not i don't want to be a part of your narcissistic supply okay you obviously have an issue okay and i don't forgive it because of the duration of it okay do i want revenge on these people i want to move on with my life i figure if i have to say there's no point in me trying to curse somebody because you're already low in a low vibrational state so i might as well just walk on 
you know what I mean? So it is what it is. I, I do understand there was a lot of white women who were involved in this, and there was a lot of, you know, black women involved, and there was a lot of Hispanic women. This was a, a, a takedown of a person that was originated by a Nazi, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Okay? Um, I get the message that you feel as though I make people look at themselves. I get this a lot, okay? And um, I think I mentioned this before. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of people look at themselves. It, it does, okay? And I get this from a lot of people. Like, at night, I get certain people's faces that come into my mind kind of like, oh, wow. Like, when you really break down, okay, Nazi experiment, a shitload of people involved in it, you got this fake family set up, which already was devastating. What people enacted out on me was a form of cruelty. Disgusting. And it's it's shameful. And a lot of fucking people were a part of it. Okay. And this is what I'm trying to say. Is that we need to understand what we do. What it is that we believe. Okay. Before we sit here and participate in something. You know, like I mentioned about people talking about well, what the fuck are we like reading history books why are we doing this because the same thing that was going on with the jews that people read about in their history books they were enacting out on another person in this modern day in this modern day now sure there was no gas chamber okay but could it have been taken that far let me tell you there were some people that were that evil that just might have done that okay it's a very serious issue Okay, that I wake up in trauma every day. So, of course, when it comes to these people who did what they did, no, I do not want to happen. I don't ever want to see them again. Okay, but I do get the feeling that there are a lot of people who are very remorseful. Continue to support me by cleaning up your mess. If you want to watch my videos, that's fine too. Okay, but it, it should be understood that by seeing people in their physical form, knowing what they did and what they supported, it's too much. Okay, I, I, I can't imagine, like, wanting to, like, hug you and hang out and shit like that. You, it was a genocide program. And that, at, at one point, or that you might want to deny that you were trying to kill me. Not you, specifically, Virgo 31, but I'm talking about the people who got involved in this and these weird psycho bitches that wanted to, like, gang up on me and stuff like that. Trying to make me feel bad about my genetics, which you can't fucking goddamn do. Anyway, next message I got for you, Virgo31, is that, yeah, um, you believe that um, people, white people still want to be friends with me. I, I'm not going to say no to white people being my friend. You know what I mean? I believe that people should be taken, it should be taken on an individual basis. But mind you, there was a large number of white people who got involved in this. Okay, uh, the corporations that were behind this, I couldn't find a job on my own. All right? Now, maybe they were, they could have been lied to. Maybe they, they didn't realize this was a Nazi fucking blah, 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 blah. But if they did understand the whole thing, that makes it even worse and even more shocking. Okay. Whether they did it for religion or whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's huge. This issue is huge. Okay. It's a scandal. It's a scandal, and I deserve compensation for it. And, um, you know, there's certain white people that I plan on contacting. I haven't contacted anybody from Instagram, you know, uh, uh, or gotten, you know, responded to anybody. I've been, like, literally hiding out, but I do know that I've gotten messages in my, my inbox. I'm dealing with a lot of social anxiety, okay? you got to understand for the people who have been writing to me, I'm very terrified right now of dealing with a lot of stuff, and it's going to take a so, slow process, okay? It's It's... If you were the target of a hate crime that was this big, okay, I think you, you, you'd understand. Um, what else? That, that's the only message I got for you. Um, but you do pop up a lot. You come up a lot, a lot. And another person, it's not really a person, it's the community of Bakersfield came up a lot. Came up today. And uh, I get the message that, um, that some of the employers here are trying to uh, change the workplace issues and when it comes to um bullying and human trafficking i hope that you guys do i hope that you do okay what really this is something that really needs to be looked at i was watching a movie that was a movie it was one of those <sighs> i like to call it whodunits or that's not really a whodunit it's more like a um like a mystery or um 
kind of a murder case file type thing, uh, kind of a combination of all this. I think the show's called Unravel, okay? And I watch Tubi because I'm cheap. I refuse to pay for anything. So I was watching this show yesterday, and they were showing this girl. It was about a man and a woman, okay? And this lady was, she went off the deep end because she was dealing with bullying at work, right? Um, just to give you a little bit of idea of the backstory is, okay, her husband's a Caucasian, I mean, a white man, okay? And this lady, she came from Thailand, okay? So she came here from another country. She came from another country, and she believed in the American dream. She believed in, like, you know, th that corporate job made her somebody, and that, you know, her whole entire identity was wrapped up in her little corporate job, which she was, uh, her job was, uh, like, a manager of a, of a seafood department okay which she kicked ass in it she was and of course she was so good at her job she ended up getting bullied right okay when it comes to her case um i was i was kind of listening to what she was why she killed this man okay this man was bullying her relentlessly now don't get me wrong i am not in any way saying what she did was right okay but you got to understand number one she was she viewed her job she placed so much importance on her job okay number one that's that's what the biggest the biggest problem that people have their materialism and their their need to feel like their associate their whole self-worth was wrapped up in that piece of shit job okay this man was taunting her on a daily fucking basis saying stuff and of course it's always about issues about her race or if she was doing something they want to make little snide remarks or whatever okay finally she he was said something and set her off so she ended up saying you mess with my job i'm going to kill you okay and you know i understand her way of thinking okay because her ability to take care of herself her needs of survival is completely understandable all right but at the same time she said this on company property she ended up losing her job okay so she ended up enacting revenge this sweet little lady she's super small and cute too right she ended up gunning him down uh she she went on like a rampage right and i was thinking to myself you know uh i understand when i lost my job over at the farmer's place that was terrifying terrifying for me because i knew because i was being bullied much like this girl was right uh I, it was terrifying for me because i was already old okay and i also knew that no one's going to take care of me but me Okay, or I'm going to end up being in some sort of abusive situation, which this is exactly what I'm trying to avoid. All right, so uh, you do go into survival mode. Okay, uh, but do I believe that uh, leaving Murray Family Farms and that because I didn't have a management position somehow made me feel as though I wasn't worth a person, I wasn't worth anything? No, I did not. Okay, and I don't even put that sort of emphasis. And this is, and don't get me wrong, people are into their status. Okay, they they're into it, big time. Okay, but the reason why I was pissed off about it because I was making a certain income, and I needed to have a certain income to continue my standard of living, and to make more in the future. So all of a sudden, that was all fucking taken away from me. I couldn't find my own goddamn job, and I was stuck in some sort of trafficking nightmare. Okay, that was not a good thing. All right. That was what I was mainly concerned about. Okay. Um, but the tra tragic part is, is that she believed, for, for, here's the thing, when I really think about the kind of job she was working now, she was a seafood manager and they would make her come in in the morning and prep. Then they wanted her to come in at night to clean the refrigerators, okay? The same kind of ridiculous, over the top, you're asking way too much of an employee and, and, the, and, and the, the mindset, of the average worker is they're fucking happy to do it and they're willing to bend over backwards to basically be a corporate slave because when i think about her having to come in at night so she can get up in the next morning she's sitting here bending over backwards so she could feel like she's you know got this american dream when it's really draining the fuck out of her you know what i mean it's like some people just it's not worth it okay it's not worth it okay um but i am glad that bakersfield is starting to understand their work policies, or at least some, some people are starting to take it seriously, okay? Because the, the bare bottom line, the reason why that woman killed that man is because you are threatening her ability to eat, to have a roof over her head, and to protect her family, okay? 
That is exactly what you're doing when you're sitting here making fun of somebody every day. You are threatening their life and you're basically putting a gun to their head. And it's not funny. And it's even worse in the case of what they did to me after leaving that fucked up employer, then being a part of their nightmarish um, um, uh, network. Okay. Meaning I was at the mercy of people who didn't give a fuck about me and made it very clear that they didn't. Okay. This is why it can get dangerous. And this is one of the reasons why Libra 14 got fucked up. Because this, this kind of shit can get out of hand. And we all know. Okay, this, this story right here that's, that happened with me, I'm glad that people are starting to wake up. This shit is, is not something to laugh at. It's not something to laugh at. That needs to be done. Now, I was thinking how, like, organizations that are supposed to help people, if people are serious about this, they need to play a more proactive role, if they're serious about it. Because, like, there's a lot of talk. There was talk about sexual harassment, but we still got people who didn't get it. Even even though they get their training, they still don't fucking get it. Okay, this is my biggest issue. You can create a law. It can be great. You can pass a law. Wonderful. Are these lazy people going to actually initiate? Are they going to enforce it? Do they know how to enforce it? Okay. Now, I will tell you, when it comes to bullying, and we talk, we're dealing with stalking issues, people need to change their policy about how they hire. Because if you're hiring somebody under the lore of like what I was dealing with, okay, the employer is already in the wrong. So, you know, you can sit here and make rules about uh, that, but you need, the the, 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 tar, the the main point is, is you need to start hiring, stop hiring people under those fucking standards or those sort of guidelines. So and so you're trying to match make somebody and you're basically holding a woman back from her life for very many years for somebody she may not even want, okay? You don't do that. You, you do not, like, hire a woman because she's married or the reason to keep her married or to, or, or to hook her up or to get her divorced and hook her up with somebody else or whatever the case is, okay? These sort of, or change her religion or any of these sort of things, okay? You need to stick with those guidelines that you protect the rights of each person and you're not going to put yourself in hot water, okay? That, need, that right there, that is the main, main issue, Work on your workplace uh, hiring practices, okay? You can't sit here and try to enforce a rule or a law on human trafficking when you just hired an employee who's there to be human trafficked. You, you see what I'm saying? So you, it doesn't work, okay? When it comes to organizations like the human Department of Human Trafficking, they should play a more proactive role with employers. Employers should be able to report signs of abuse to the human trafficking agency to where the human trafficking agency can assist somebody who's going through it seriously assist that person and know how to assist that person okay making that confidentiality is of the utmost important okay and which nobody has the right to penetrate okay there i remember my friend she was uh she was kind of like a like a little bit of a drifter she left her husband many years ago and she ended up staying in a um a woman shelter and one of the rules of the women's shelters was is that you couldn't give the address of the place. You had to be referred to from an agency, whatever. And I'm sure, hopefully, nobody blabbermouth that address of that place. But there's certain things that cannot, it, it's, and it, you cannot excuse people opening up their mouth and divulging certain information. When it comes to people in these positions, they need to be able to uphold confidentiality. If you have a big mouth, you do not belong in one of those positions. It's that simple. But I'm glad to know that people are. I do hope that that organizations like Department of Human Trafficking uh, takes this seriously. You know what I mean? And, and takes proactive steps to be able to help people who are in this situation. You know what I mean? I personally, I remember when I was in the heart of my targeting, I kept thinking, you know, there should be professional networks for targeted individuals. There should be. You know what I mean? How do you do that? And the problem with it is that I was being targeted by people who basically, you know, they're big, important people. You know what I mean? Which, and it's just shocking. It's terrifying. Okay. But I understand um, the needs of human tra um, uh, victims who are, uh, uh, victims who are uh, of human trafficking. And what they need is they do need protection of their privacy. They need uh, to be taken seriously. 
And uh, if you are one of those employers, like I said, who do traffic uh, employees, then I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? There is no way of working around this issue that it causes a lot of damage. Okay. And I can't tell you what to do, but I hope that you understand and see what this issue does to people and you would stop that foolish practice. Also, I get the message from the community that, and I get this message a lot, that a lot of people regarded Libra 14 as a fucking loser. Okay. But they were, they didn't think of him as a loser when they used him in this bullshit, right? This is what I'm talking about, the hypocrisy of people and why it's stupid to get involved in people's stupid games. Now, the very same person that they were being a part of, now that he's, you know, whatever, he's fucked up, then they're going to roll over him, all over him, right? This, this is the machine or the, the, the uh, abusive type nature of, of certain groups and people. You know what I mean? Now, I, I, I'm a little shocked that Libra 14 wasn't as cool as I thought he was, the image that he made for himself. See, this is why when I was a teenager, that would have crushed me to find out his true nature. But I'm an adult now, okay? And I realize people aren't always what they seem, okay? But I, w I just kind of chalked it up like, okay, that's another fucking person who I'm going to have to fucking hate. And write off. You know what I mean? I don't want other people to be people that I write off. So it's better for me to have a relationship with them that's kind of distant. Like, you know, I might call people, and there's certain people you want to get close to, and there's certain people that you want to develop relationships with. Yeah. Now, had Libra 14 been a decent person, I probably eventually would have said, you know, maybe I would never have him as a business partner ever. Fucking ever. Okay? But I wouldn't have minded him, like, you know, coming on and talking about his history or whatever. Something like that. I mean, I don't know. I don't ever recall myself thinking about incorporating him. But it could have been that way. You know what I mean? I didn't hate the man. But he certainly fucking hated my ass. You know what I mean? What a jerk. Anyway, uh, a lot of people within the community think that he's just kind of a, a dick, I guess. Which is funny. Um, yeah, there I know that the um, the employers and my all the people that I used to know, they all get on social media with these important people and they talk and they talk and they talk. And this is the result of it. Okay. And I'm not going to sit here and point at fingers. I'm not trying to play the blame game. We all know who's responsible for this. And we all know who's squeaky clean. Maria's squeaky clean. I didn't do shit. Okay. But, um, so this is the end of the result. And I'm trying not to complain very much because I'm really trying to move on with my life. Okay. But, um, this is, this was a horrible experience for me. It was a fucking nightmare. You know what I mean? And, um, I still feel a lot of a sense of terrorism or terror when I think about this issue, because like I said, it threw me for a loop. You know what I mean? Because I don't expect these sort of things to happen. Uh, what else? Um, the community tends to think very highly of me, and I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and then a lot of people from my past here in Bakersfield watch my videos, and that's cool to know. You know what I mean? That's very cool. I do appreciate your support. That means a lot. The next message I got is for um, Cancer22. You pop into my mind from time to time. Um, I didn't mean for this to be. Okay, but I get the message from you. Is that you feel as though this whole issue is a big slap in the face of white people. I don't want to say all white people, but the people who initiated this. That it's a fucking slap in the face. To them. Okay. That wasn't my intention. My intention was just to move on with my life. But like I said, I didn't start it. I can't be responsible for starting it, okay? Um, when I think about the issue in, in detail, it's very shocking um, that they would... The, some of the things that I was coming to realization of the shit that they did, the violations that they did against me, like, it's, it's like shocking. How fucking dare you? You know what I mean? You, you overstepped that line. You know, with the trying to force somebody, trying to bully somebody, trying to define who I am as a person... Like I said, there's a lot of white people who don't see themselves as like cross burners on the the, the yard. Therefore, they think that they are they're a, they they're a okay, right? But a lot of people are just as bad as the people who who burn crosses on the yard. Instead of like fucking just straight up like lynching you, they'll do things like blacklist you, okay? And then use religion as an excuse and so on and so forth, okay? The very fact that this blew up in their face. Um, 
I guess it's karma, all right? But I don't hate white people, and obviously you're a white person who I think very highly of, so you don't have to worry about it, though. Um, also, uh, what else do I want to say? That, oh, okay, the message I get from you is that white people can live peacefully with their understanding of um, them being uh, wrong in this issue, meaning that they shouldn't have come out after me. Um, this, this was a Nazi issue, and... Um, yeah, I, I can see why a lot of white people feel as though it was a slap in their face because they, this was a Nazi issue. It was Nazi from the get-go, and their affiliation and their association with it speaks volumes. You know what I mean? There's certain people that I'm forever going to associate with being a Nazi, and that's unfortunate. You know what I mean? It's like it totally gives a completely different meaning to that song, Nights in White Satin. You know, I, I honestly believe the story when he said it was about his bed sheets, right? <laughs> he said it was about his bed sheets. But so were those things that, that people used to wear in the South and when they lynched people. You, you see what I'm saying? So sometimes songs can be coded or hidden or, or whatever. And, you know, I, I just thought it had a beautiful uh, melody. It was, it was dreamy. It had a, a beautiful, dreamy nature. Um, I didn't. I I never really associated the song with love or anything. It just seemed like it was a very drifting type of song, melancholic, reflective, that sort of sound, which made me like it. Okay, um, but I had no idea. And but now I look at him as a completely different person. I when I was a kid, I never thought. I I wonder is so and so a racist. I wonder. If, I I kind of assume that most people these most people are uh, people of their time. Okay, meaning like if you grew up in the 1950s, you're probably going to have the sort of mentality of a white man in the 1950s. Okay, I never thought that their their uh, racial preferences had anything to do with the music. Meaning like, just because uh, you know a, an artist was white or any other color, that never that never mattered to me. What I cared about was the sound. Lyrics was a huge thing. I, I like lyrics. Uh, I, I'm somebody who I am just like completely drawn to shit that sounds melancholic, okay? Of course, I like the upbeat, happy stuff too, but you know, I like songs that are reflective and <clears throat> stuff like that. So, this is the sort of stuff I gravitate to. I never really cared about this person's black, this person's white. I think everybody has experienced love, everybody has experienced hopes and dreams, everybody has experienced betrayal, everybody has experienced loss. You know, these, these are those things that songs are usually written about, okay, which is a universal issue. I never thought about that, okay, and I never wanted to have to think about that, okay, but I will say my admiration for certain celebrities were happy thoughts in my mind because it takes me back to a time when things were simple and my dreams were continuous meaning like you 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 don't think you think of there's no there's so many different possibilities in life you know it's endless you're just like so happy to greet the day because there's so many things that you can accomplish so many things to dream and desire right and music is a wonderful thing way to imagine all of those sort of things kick back daydream what's the future going to be like what are you thinking about It's unfortunate because, like I said, you know, when you find out what people are, but it's not my responsibility to know what other people do. You know what I mean? I, I choose to appreciate people for their artistic value, okay? And I don't necessarily need to know what people's political or religious views are. You know what I mean? I'm just more focused on the song. But it's kind of sad to know that dude was a total dick, though. Um, oh, well. And you also do believe that I will eventually get through this. And it's hard because, you know, um, I check along and, you know, I work on content with no real knowing what the hell is going on. I do get the feeling that there's a lot going on right now behind the scenes. Um, and as far as the, the important people who were involved in this, that there is peace among us. And I'm glad about that. Um, I did make my intentions very clear in my last videos and uh, my goals of moving my Patreon forward. Um, there's a lot of people that I do want to work with, and I would say that Cancer 22 is definitely one on those lists um, that I feel as though um, would be a good to, to work with in the future. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video. I've been talking for about an hour. Um, I am working on new Patreon content. I'm going to be talking about... <laughs> 
<laughs> breakfast foods in this upcoming video. And then I'm also going to be talking about um, everyday alchemy. And then uh, I don't know if I have time to do this. I'm depending on how, how, how this whole issue with Patreon is going. I would like to put in a special video about transformation. I think a lot of people are interested in transforming their lives, you know, from you know their state that they're in being of discontented the discontented uh whatever that might be okay like i said a lot of things can make you discontented but people who want to transform their lives and move into the direction that they really want to be and i'd like to be a part of that so if you would like to support me on the swan song manifesto i would definitely appreciate it i'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video if you like my videos go ahead and like share and subscribe to my channel um, i'm trying to get these numbers issues straightened out i'm trying to get myself focused straight um and get an idea. I understand the bullies that have, have created or were swarming this channel, they're not going to fix their issue. Okay, but I can see that my numbers have increased a little bit and I do appreciate my new subscribers. I am very sad that I was sucked up in this and I have a really hard time dealing with it and it's, I cannot cope with any excuses for it. So to me it's like, you know, it's just time to move on. So I hope that you guys check me out on Patreon. I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you have a wonderful end of the day. Take care. Bye-bye.